David, it's so good to see you, man. Your face just uh, makes me happy. That's where we're at now. <laughs> oh, I feel the same. I feel the same. That beard, the, <laughs> the hat, everything. Matt Black, everything. That's right. That. Yeah, MKH, VHD. <laughs> A big fan. That's I'm funny. a big fan here as well. I've, Tech head. I have two of uh two copies of the shirt just because I'm like, well, I wear it a lot. We might as well because eventually it becomes less less black. So I was like, no, 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 we gotta keep the color. Um Love it. So that's really funny. But dude, we were just talking about uh so I ship mics to podcast guests if they need one. Uh and now like little baby headphones too, just because I'm like, all right, we want to up the production quality, we want this to be a quality product and um you know, something that goes on all of our our legacies. No. And uh Love it. But we went through a run where it was like Tony Christine, Joe Tobias, and John Taylor Sweet, uh, and like Jordan Voth, and one or two more people. And it was all West Coast mother truckers. And all I, I like, I track all the mics to make sure that they get out on time. And all of them took like eight days, nine days, whatever. And it was like during a, one of FedEx, like COVID, like, hey, we're taking our time. And I was. I was stressing because I was like, um, I need an episode for next week, you know, or whatever was happening, but kind of funny. So it's a grind, but, but you, you got, you got your systems down. So it was here on time. I love I it. I think it was all meant to be. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Yesterday it was like, I'm trying to, uh, this is very inside baseball for anybody listening, but if you're curious about podcasting, like trying to batch, uh, as much as possible just to give it to the editor, you know? Right. And like, um, what we'll do is if there's something that changes in our content calendar, uh, as we start to promote stuff is I'll just go back in and do a new intro, you know, and the editor can like right. whip it up real quick. Um, and so that's cool, but it's, uh, it's a lot. Like I, I just texted our, our podcast manager and I was like, I'll by Monday, we'll have 10 episodes in the bank ready to go. And she was like, Holy crap. And I was like, yeah, we're going to be ahead of the game hopefully. So <laughs> stacking it up. Yeah. That's great. How's your, that's uh, great, man. how's your last year been, man? What's going on? Wow. Great, uh, great question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's uh, the last year has been actually ended up traveling a lot more than I thought I would. Mm. I traveled a, a bit more than most people that I know. Yeah, I have the lug. I have a lot of luxuries in my life. Um, one of them is being in Santa Barbara. The other one is not having a family to look after Mm -hmm. as well as not being married. Yeah. And because of those things, I can, I can be very mobile. Yeah. And that ended up being the biggest blessing last year because I could just pick up and go places. Right. Um, So I ended up going to Maine. I ended up going to uh, a lot around California, but also Sedona um, and, I before the pandemic, I had been. I went to Mexico as well as where did I go? Oh, I saw you in uh, Florida, in Orlando. Yeah, which was great. We had that creative conference with Devin. Yeah, uh, and I think and and then once lockdown hit, it was uh, it was a lot of that. But it was it was a uh, it was a bit of restructuring everything. A lot of creating content that is consumable for my current clients sure um creating a client guide for them which yeah. you graciously provided me with yeah the uh, wedding guide man it, it's uh oh it's so great it's so helpful if even david mendoza uses it no i was kidding <laughs> no yeah, yeah i love it i love it it's uh it, it's it's well thought out and and there's a lot of great content there, so sure. uh, really, really thankful for that. Yeah. Um, so it was a lot of a lot of doing that, and then now coming into this year, it's been it's been a lot of booking last minute things for the fall, yeah. as well as booking well into October of next year. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's uh that's been a lot of the the last year. Sure. And then I I started designing. I designed a few sites for people last year. Oh, that's uh, cool. My background, yeah, my background. Like, I don't know if you know, but my background is in uh, graphic design. So I okay. was I was the head designer for Show It. Yeah. Which is which is a, a platform that a lot of photographers use. Yeah. That's cool. And and so I ended up designing a site for meg brady house um of brady house photographers they're out in Kauai and some of like the most badass photographers out there that's awesome um and then another uh, then designed another site for 
uh, Marlies Hartman of M Hart Photo, and she's a beast in and of herself. Yeah, she has probably some of like probably one of the strongest portfolios that I've ever seen. Mm, that's awesome. That's real cool. Yeah, I knew you had a background in graphic design uh, when we were talking about the wedding guide, and you were like, "Oh, this is actually pretty good." And I was like, "Yeah, trust me, I didn't do it." Um, you know, we had had a designer do it, but I didn't know the web background too. So that's super cool that you could kind of have something during last year to you know. Yeah, to carry me over. Yeah. That was that was a lot. It, it's nice to have a fallback as a, a fallback to another creative career yeah. in case this goes belly up. Yeah. And uh, again, speaking about luxuries, like that's, that's something that, that I felt very fortunate to have. Cause if, if I don't want to do weddings or if I kind of get tired of it, yeah. I can always revert back to that. And that's always been a passion of mine is to create beautiful content yeah. in a graphical form as well, which is, which is where a lot of my, my photography like, stems from and where I, I get a lot of inspiration through that. Yeah. You can tell that you have like a, you know, at least at some level, a design background in the sense of like a lot of what you're on your Instagram, you know, which I assume is like your favorite work at some level is like the compositions, like even the recent one with the dogs, the dog silhouette and like, <laughs> um, but that's that literally looks like something, you know, if it was an illustration, it looks like what somebody would design to be like, hey, this is like an ad for dog lovers. Right. Like because that's also what the couple is like. They love dogs. Right. And uh, yeah. And uh, I think that's cool. Having those extra skills. And I found are always like so useful. You never know when you're going to need something random or like whether it's for your photography, your business or home ownership or life or whatever. Where you're like, oh, I'm actually glad that I had that skill set where normally you're like you know, why do I have this? Well, like, why? Like, I'm sure there are days when you're like, oh, I don't use my design background at all anymore. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always nice to, to have something that's complimentary to, to come in. Cause there's always those, like, if you come from a corporate if you, let's say there's other photographers out there, Jason Vincent or whoever yeah. that come from a place of, oh, I was an engineer. Yeah. Like, like there are processes that are, I'm sure of like thinking of things like yeah. he's, he can be very technical. So anything that's super technical, great. Like bring that into the background and yeah. into their background. Um, but to have something that is so closely like related to in the field is, is really nice. Yeah. What's, what's your background? Like what, what did you, yeah. So where did I mean, you come from? Yeah. Where did I come from? Uh, the big thing I always tell people is um, my I wasn't even planning on going to college. Right. So I grew up in a small town of Delaware and I was like, you know, I was playing guitar and was like, OK, yeah, I'll probably join a band and then like be a mechanic or something, you know, which is nothing wrong with right. that. But it was just not my, uh, you know, my dreams were like, OK, yeah, I'm either going to be a rock star or I'm just going to be working at home. And. I ended up getting a scholarship to college for my uh, for guitar, and that was crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. What? What? I see your I see your your quiver in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> At least two of the babies. Yeah, um, yeah. So we, um, yeah, I, I like wasn't even planning on going to school. We knew nothing. My my parents didn't go to college. We, our, my grandpa did, but that he was like the last one, and. You know, like we knew nothing about the process. Like, with like we go to the FAFSA meeting or whatever, we were our minds were blown about like how everything was going. And so, um, but nonetheless, I ended up going and, and meeting some of my favorite people, and um, you know, studying guitar performance uh, classical for uh, two years, and then I ended up getting kicked out. So I got kicked out of college, and. Uh, we were all like, oh, crap, you know, <laughs> and so we're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just glossed over that. Why did you get kicked out? <laughs> uh, to keep it short, uh, I'll tell you off the show, you know, my school was very strict and had uh, pretty strict rules. And and again, for me, it was like a new environment. I knew nothing about how to deal with a lot of that stuff. Um, and so, you know, one of the situations where I broke the rules and I think there's a little bit of like I was the guy that had the full ride scholarship and they, there were only three of us. And so wow. Spider-Man situation the per per year or yeah. or in the entire school. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. So there's yeah. So it was 12 to 15. Yeah, exactly. Uh, wow. But our class was the first, you know, they had never given music scholarships before. So it was a uh, yeah, risky business, if you will. But um, yeah, I got kicked out and was not really sure what I wanted to do. And then um, eventually it was like I worked for Apple for a year. I was always into cameras, was always into tech. Um, 
but had never really even like saved up for a camera or anything like that. But uh, eventually, what started saving saving for a camera and uh, was a concert photographer for a little bit, was a worship pastor for a little bit, um, and then you know really like taking photos. You got addicted to it and ended up going back to school for like digital media and communications. And cool. so I had a little bit of film background, a little bit of like visual design language and, uh, you know, took some Photoshop and illustrated classes. They're not my favorite. Uh, but, uh, you know, we did all that, graduated in 2013 and then, uh, you know, moved to DC and worked in the, the church world. So I worked for a large church, uh, running their campus sync system because they're a multi-site church. So I managed all that, right. uh, designed that for them. And I had, I had, a, I had, a, I did a lot of that for our church here too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. It was a weird situation. Cause it was like, uh, I was also doing media, right? You do like a little promo video for a sermon or a ministry or an announcement or something, right. um, which was cool. Cause you were doing something different every day. Uh, and then at the same time it was like, Hey, we have seven campuses or eight campuses or whatever. And then it was like, but none of them have Wi-Fi. So we're like, oh, because normally I, just, I would just Dropbox everything. We're like, oh, yeah, this is great. And the, but they don't have Wi-Fi because they're at movie theaters. Um, and the movie theaters like wouldn't rent us, uh, let us get into their Wi-Fi. And so that was like an interesting thing to do. But uh, it was super cool. Met a lot of cool people. That's how I got to D.C. Uh, met my wife, all that jazz. And then uh, was shooting weddings on the side, you know, when I could. And one day was like, let's, let's go for it, you know, and, and decided to take, the, take the leap and go full time and said, all right, I'm going to try this for six months. If it doesn't work, I'll get a real job. And, uh, that, right. that was seven years ago. So <laughs> look at you now. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me now on a podcast in my office. Yeah, yeah. 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 In my bedroom. So riding around those motorcycles, doing it all. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'll have to, uh, I'll send you the promo video for, uh, I'm launching a course later this year. And, uh, the videographer guy was like, we should get some footage of you riding your motorcycle. You know, like, like part of the idea is like, we're selling the life that you could have. And I was like, well, I don't think I have that cool of a life. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm a photographer. And he was like, no, that's literally what people want to do. And, uh, and so we have like a, right. a bunch of cool like drone shots of me riding on oh the motorcycle and stuff. It's cool. So that thing is so cool. What is it? I have a 1250 GS. So it's like an adventure bike. That's right. Yeah. Oh man. Isn't that, isn't that what they used? Uh, Oh God. It was, it was two like actor guys and they like rode across like yeah. Siberia. Uh, that was long way. It's a uh, Ewan McGregor, the guy who played a uh, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Obi-Wan. And then his buddy, Charlie, uh, yeah, long way over or something like that. They did long way down, long way over, and then Apple TV just did the long way up or whatever like that. So yeah, yeah, that's what they use for art. The bike is basically it, there's no competition, which I didn't know. I didn't know oh, anything about that world, but they're they're amazing. Yeah, I love it. it I love it. I, I used to ride it. We talked about this a little bit, but yeah. like I used to ride a Ducati here in yeah. town, and it was oh god, it's so fun. That's awesome. But those but those those BMWs are just yeah like indestructible. Yeah, totally. I've I've dropped it before already, so I've I'm, uh, of course yeah. I need and it's like my bike. Before, it's never a matter. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say my bike before was a was a Harley, but it was like stripped down, right? Like I had nothing, no lights, no mirrors, like just engine in the seat. Um, kind of like a bobber. Yeah, yeah, and it was cool, you Love know, it. and it was loud, right? And it was obnoxious and uh, smelled like gas, you know. It was, it was amazing uh you know but then i couldn't do anything you know right. i got like 70 miles to the tank and it was like all right we can go on a little camping trip it might not start it might not you know uh you know run for us all the time no cruise control you know no no abs nothing none of the comforts that uh ironically my bike now has like so many things but anyway yeah, it's cool. I love it. It's cool. We just no, it's great. I mean, it's 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 fun to see again, like what the what photography affords us, right? Yeah. Like we we can do these things. There's affordances with everything, right? Yeah, totally. Like when you when you go into when you work for when you work corporate, the affordance is there's safety, or it feels like there's safety, right? I yeah. mean, a lot of people like got got laid off last year unfortunately so yeah that that safety feels less so yeah but that's that's the affordance there but you're but you're giving up a lot of your freedom as far as time yeah totally and location yeah and now and for us we get the affordance of of we get to go everywhere do what we want yeah 
like pursue our quote unquote passion. Yeah. But, but the, but on the flip side, we're, we're risking our livelihood. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. That's all on us. Yeah. That's all on us. So yeah, there's no support. So, uh, system. I, I, I love it. Cause you asked, you asked, uh, and for all the listeners, it was like, I mean, this was early, this is mid March, yeah. late March. And and you went on this little trip and kind of asked your 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 followers if like you should post more of that. Yeah. And yes, I like I think that like I loved seeing it. Yeah. Because there's there's something a little bit be- like behind the scenes of totally. what you're doing with with your life and what's important to you and yeah. what makes what makes photography worth it to you. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. I think it's like um, over the last few years, I've realized that my goal like you know, I love taking a cool photo, right? Like I love, you know, having a photo where it's like, I get to flex my muscle or be like, Hey, all right, here it is. Like, what's up. Right. Uh, like you do or Jason or Devin, you know, those guys do. Um, I love that. But what I realized that like my main goal business wise is freedom, you know, freedom to go on the motorcycle or freedom to, you know, eliminating excuses for like, Oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. Like, it's like, now I make my own schedule. Like I always have time, you know, or, uh, you know, time to hang out with friends and family, you know, like I'm a, I'm a serial extrovert and relationships are awesome and, and, you know, community matters. So it's like, how can I make my life and business work towards that? And, uh, and it's just been fun. Like, fi- I feel like we're finally in that zone. Uh, COVID was stressful, of course, and it still is, but it's like, um, you know, I feel, I see the light at the end of the tunnel and we're getting back to the, like, fun times good yeah <laughs> good good yeah. yeah i was it's so funny as soon as as we would we had this conversation in a creative the, that conference where we met yeah um where you you were talking about your war chest yeah and as soon as covid hit i was like <laughs> adam is a fucking g it's like yeah, is yeah, there yeah. cussing a lot on this thing? Okay, cool. um like adam is like set because like, <laughs> like he was talking about his war chest yeah like and like I had one too, but yeah. I was just it was it was one of those where I was like, okay, like yeah, this is why you save, this is why it feels good. Totally. Yeah. Well and that's it's one of those things too, like uh, you know, even that, like me talking about the war chest was such a, like a funny topic, and then like, you know, really it's just like saving up money for a rainy day, right? You know, and, and there are different yeah. amounts as you grow up and and trying to do all that stuff, but it's like I didn't grow up around mature money making decisions, you know, and like mature, sure. uh, you know, doing the right thing when it came to money. Right. Like if you got it, you spend it. Right. Because I think that's a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah. Especially photography for a lot of us. We're like leveling up out of a, a certain lifestyle or a certain, right. you know, demographic or whatever. And um, but now that's one of my favorite things to talk about. Like I wish uh, I wish more photographers were like, OK, I want to have some mature, mature, like grown up conversations. Like I released a, uh, a retirement and savings video on Patreon and it's my lowest no, like it. engaged video, you know, but I'm like, hey, here's my here's what I do. Here's what, my, what was recommended to me. You know, it's not financial advice. Right. Technically. But I'm like, here are some things to think about, you know. Right. And uh, and it's just it's just helpful because it's like, you know, Jay-Z said more money, more problems. So it's like, hey. You know, you got to know how to manage what's going on. And, uh, you know, I know have to. I know a lot of us have get big tax bills when uh, COVID do- doesn't happen. And it's how can we, you know, niche that a tiny, tiny bit and um, and save for a future. Right. Because it's like I'm not shooting weddings when I'm 65. Yeah. You know? No, not at all. Yeah. Like I, I feel the same. I, there's there's definitely a there is a cap to what you can do i i know the only people that i know there's like three photographers who are past 50 and still shooting yeah and yeah it there there is a limit just like with basketball like with any sport yeah. there's there's a physical like a real physical limit to yeah. what you can do and i mean part like part of why I mean I've been losing weight and all this stuff over the last year. I mean partially because of like the thirty pounds I gained <laughs> last year. I love it. Um, but gearing up for the year because if I'm going to be shooting a like a back to back weddings, yeah. I have a week. I have I have two weeks this year where I'm shooting five like five weddings, mm, and yeah. it's it's flying and flying and so like traveling is great, but it's also super taxing on the yeah. body. Yeah. And 
and getting to that physical place of okay like let's I, I probably have a good if I wanted to I could have like another 10 years at this but how do I set myself up so I don't have to have those 10 years sure no totally yeah no definitely I, th- I think that's the biggest thing again it's like that that freedom um tell me a little bit about your imagery like I feel at least on Instagram you know again I love you just drop these like it's it, there's something to appreciate about a guy who just says hey here's what I like and am best at and says, this is what I, this is what I want to do. Um, in a world where it's like, Hey, you should share about this on your Instagram or you should share about this on your, you know, and, uh, and you're like, I take photos of awesome couples that are super colorful, a smidge different than maybe what you've seen, you know, like, what are you thinking? Like what motivates you to make work like that? And what do you like about the work that you make? Oh, good question. Hmm. What do I like about the work that I make? I think the uh, the thing that I, the things that I love are composition and color. Hmm. So, when, anytime I'm shooting, I'm thinking about that. Yeah. Um. And I, I'm I'm basically like, <laughs> all of my favorite photos come to a place of of it's a landscape that I that I would take if the couple wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a landscape photo. And I'm not, I'm by no means a landscape photographer. Sure. I think that, the like, I mean, all of my favorite photos are like center composed mm-hmm. and yeah. things that photographers hate and things that aren't going to, things that aren't going to win you awards. Mm. I have no interest in yeah. awards. I love that. Um, I've, I have, a, I think I have entered, I've entered competitions in the past, yeah. but but mainly at the at the behest of somebody pushing me into it. Sure. Uh, but but as far as as the imagery that I'm that I'm producing, it's it like and sharing because I'm really only sharing about one percent of the work right. that I'm putting out there. Yeah. The as iceberg. we all do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of it comes down to. Like, is this a good photograph without the couple in it? Mm. And from there, then like I'm choosing my background and then I'm putting the couple in there. And and then specifically over the last three years, um, learned how to light them well. Yeah. Because before I wasn't really doing much lighting mm-hmm. uh, because I didn't know how to. <laughs> and, and, now, and, and now I can bring in some lighting to make them look even more like romantic i I like Mm. i like the photos to be romantic magical is something that's associated a lot with with my photography um partially because it's a word that i put out there yeah um and it kind of trains a lot of my followers to to think of that sure but but i i uh it, it, it and there's there's a lot of photographers who are in the same camp as I am, but they exist outside of the wedding space. Mm, yeah, they're because I come from I come from a portrait background. Okay, and uh, for as far as like photography is concerned, I was going through like a bit of a like depression and um, living by myself, and there's like suicidal thoughts there. It's it was it was really dark and for photography is basically what saved me from that. Mm. I, I had bought a camera and my parents were, were taking a trip up to, up to Seattle. I went with them. And once I got back after taking a few photos, I, I told myself I, I had seen, I'm a big, like I'm a big um, student of YouTube. Yeah. Same. Because I think it's such a very interesting platform. And it was a time when Casey Neistat was daily vlogging. Yeah. And that's something that we've connected over. And I think that that, that hustle and he was posting, the, all the, these these daily vloggers were posting a new photo every single day. Yeah. Or not a new photo, a new video every single day. Yeah. And I know I, I, didn't ha- I didn't physically have it in me to be able to create something like that. Mm. but I, I knew that I needed something to look forward to every single day. 
Yeah. And so I, I told myself, I will take a new portrait of a new person every day for as long as I can. And if, if I miss a day, that's okay. Mm. If I like like having a lot of grace with myself, but a lot of it was get out there and go meet somebody, talk to them and like, yeah, just, just get out there. And that's really what took me out of it. Mm. And so I feel like photography saved my life in that way. Wow. And so with that, it was a lot of editing every day. And that's how I learned how to shoot. I come from, so it was shoot a portrait of a new person. And I was really shooting portraits with the 35 millimeter and a, and uh, the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.2 and this (laughs) and a Canon 5D Mark three. Oh, wow. Which in my opinion is like, my favorite camera for color. Mm. Um, I think it has the best color profile out there. Mm. Even, even now, uh, the only thing that the only one that rivals it is the one DX Mark two, which is the flagship camera for Canon or was the flagship camera. There's a five DX Mark three now, Yeah, but, but from, from there, I learned to color things and I was seeing what other people were doing. There's a lot of blues and teals and, and extracting those colors. There's a lot of blues in the shadows. And so I really love that color blues. Blue is like very important to me. It's very calming. Mm. My favorite color in the world is, is what I call like deep sea blue. Mm. And it's the color that happens right at like about 10 minutes after sunset at the beach and the, and the water goes this like shimmery blue. And so a lot of that is, it was part of my, my photos and then, and then brought the oranges back into the skin tone. I love that. So that's where I, I like found this palette that really, really worked for me. Mm. And, and there were other portrait photographers that were doing that, but it, it, it hasn't and didn't really make the jump into wedding photography. I'd never seen anybody really do it. Sure. And so that's why when I started to do photography for weddings, it, I, it was something that was just trained in me to right. really bring, bring those colors in. And for a while I was doing a lot of that, that signature blue, but now, now it's it's less about the blue and more about what what color is already there and what can I pull out. Although sometimes I'll like add a splash of color there that's not really there, and it's just kind of a fun signature look for me. Yeah, no, totally. I feel like it'd be uh, that's one of those things that you see photographers who don't offer something. But I'm like, if David ever did an editing workshop or like an editing video, I'd go watch. I'd, I'd go there. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, man. I, that's a, that's a big compliment. Yeah, I think it's cool. You know, I think. Um, you know, having that kind of approach to it, you, even you saying like blue and orange, you know, like complementary colors, right? Like, you know that because you're a designer, right. you know, where most photographers like we don't think about that or know that stuff uh, starting out, you know, and uh, I remember one of the first photos I took, like they're not of a person. Uh, it was of pumpkins and then the blue sky. Right. And I was just like, this is my best photo ever. You know, it was like 2009, probably 12 years <laughs> ago, it. I guess. Um And I think there's something with photographers where um, I talk to some of my mentees about this and I'm always like, why do you like this photo? You know, and they're like, and it won't be the big thing. It'll be one thing, you know, or it'll be the colors or it'll be this, the expression. And I'll be like, okay, cool. Like, let's chase that down next time you're shooting. Like, let's hunt for it. You know, let's try, let's work for it, you know? Uh, Because I know it's like, not every time you shoot, you're going to have these colors. So, but it's not a big deal because you're professional. You're still skilled at what you do. But if you see blue and orange, or if you see that blue, you're like, hey, we're, we're going to shoot this right now, you know? And knowing when that time is going to happen and knowing how to, you know, get it to where you want it to be. And then, yeah, editing to bring it back, you know, I think is really cool. What a, it's kind of funny, but you just confirmed my suspicion. One of my team members has a, so I have a few like photographers on the team, and uh, she shoots a Nikon D750, which was like, my favorite camera for a long time, but on the like, you know, autofocus, it wasn't super great. It wasn't even that expensive. Um, You know, it was like, let me uh, make sure we're all good here. Um, And it was like, not super expensive, not not that fancy. Nikon wasn't proud of it, right? You know, Nikon was like, oh, I'll just still do it. And, but I loved the colors and editing the raws from it. And I switched over from that camera from a 5D Mark III, which I also loved the colors, um, 
But like I shoot now with like, you know, what I think is like good Sony stuff. I have an A92 and A7R4. Right. And I still, you know, and I trust that if I spent more time in Lightroom on it, I could get it back. But it doesn't feel right. it doesn't feel the same way it did. Like the process to get there feels different. Um, right. And there's like a friction, which is not fun. It's not fun. Right. The friction. The friction is is I think where where I think that's the best word for it. And I oh man, Sony, Sony. I've I've edited Nikon files. I had Devin shoot for me one time. Yeah. And I mean, I love the black and whites on a Nikon. Mm. Oh my god they are buttery you can pull three stops on either side yeah. it was yeah. those are man wow yeah. wow um and even like i shoot on the mark four now mm-hmm. and i it's funny because when you fall in love with the photography with from a certain lens and a certain time in your career in your career you feel so attached to those lenses because mm. it, it feels like this like golden time where you're like, right. wow, I was re- creating really, really good stuff there. Um, now that I'm on the Mark IV and I'm shooting a lot of other lenses, like it feels less magical to me just because it's it doesn't have that same look. Yeah. But but I feel like we all kind of like have these gravitations towards these like original cameras that we started on because they're kind of like our babies and yeah. that's where that's where we came from yeah. um but but yeah i feel like with when you get when you hop into a new system um it's it's difficult to recreate i feel like you're always chasing that that old like that old dream yeah uh or not old dream but those old those old edits yeah and i've it's it, funny you bring this up because recently i've gone i opened up a few old old lightroom catalogs mm. where i was shooting ballerinas in in new york city and in the dunes here in california and and really trying to re reteach myself how i was thinking about photography because there's something so special about it and it's evolved, but I think I've, I've lost touch with a little bit of what I was doing. Mm. And I, and I want to, I want to reintroduce some of it again with all the new information that I've, that I've sure. gained over the last three years. And it's, uh, it's been fun. It's, it's fun to go back to those, those, those edits and, and refigure out what, what works and what doesn't. Yeah. No, totally. I think that's the one thing, uh, you know, photographers, it's easy for me because it's like you think, oh, I posted this. It's done. The value of this image is done. You know, right. like unless uh, unless you bring it in your portfolio or something like you feel like the value is done. But it, but it's not true. You know, like you and I could both find an image from five years ago that would still resonate with our audience, but also resonate with us. You know, uh, of course, you know, I think that's cool. I don't even think about that, but it's so true. Like. It's um, it's very hard for us unless unless there is like this banner, you know. Like it's weird. I, this is very obscure, and it's not wedding related. But one of my yeah, no, please. One of my first random uh, corporate gigs I got, uh, I didn't know this at the time. I thought I was just supposed. I'm going out with these students, these like doctorate level students at a, a university in Philly, um, and we're in the marsh, and we're just documenting them in the marsh. And all I was doing was just uh, I was hired like by the marketing people of the school or something like that um right zero experience 100 percent only on connection like they were just like yeah adam could probably do it um uh, which like i wouldn't have hired myself to do this um but one of the last photos of the day uh you know because it's this big university it ended up on a billboard and i was like what and i i have the photo of the billboard in my brain right now and i think about it it's a cool photo it's not that's not game changing, right? Like it would impress zero people nowadays. Um, but I kind of think about it and I'm like, oh yeah, that work was also valuable and valuable to those people, to that school and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's, um, I was talking to somebody today earlier about the, how much stress gets put in and pressure gets put into a wedding day for photographers. And it's like, we only do one of these, you know, or we do one of these every weekend, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five. And our couples are like, this is the only one of our lives ever, you know, (laughs) and we just kind of get used to it. (laughs) Right. So, right. 
Yeah, it's 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 wild because for us it becomes less special, especially over time. Yeah, I think that I get nervous every single wedding. Yeah, a little bit, and I think that as long as that nervousness is there, it it makes me push a little harder. Mm. Cause, cause I, I, I want to be nervous. I want to make sure that I'm, that I, that I have that like kind of game time nerves mm. where, yeah, where like, but like I, I was a soccer player and a runner in, in high school and college and, and having that nerve of, am I going to do okay? Like, am I like, am, am I like, I'm, I'm qualified to be here for sure. Sure. But what if something goes wrong? And then once you get into the flow of the day, you go like you go right back into it. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's what's so interesting about photography, about wedding photography, is that you can do anything. Yeah. Like, like you can. You have to shoot. You have to shoot everything. Like you're a portrait photographer. You're a detail. Like you're a product photographer. You're a family photographer. You're a documentary photographer. Yeah. And. And then also you got a, and you're an event photographer all in one. Totally. And so it, it prepares you for the ability to shoot billboards for, yeah. for <laughs> all these doctors in the marsh. Yeah, I guess so. It's yeah. That's one thing uh, Ryan Brennezer talks about all the time. It's like your, your first image and your 3000th image of the day could still be just as important for wedding photographers. Whereas like portrait people, commercial photographers, et cetera, like those guys are obviously cool. But I feel like uh, wedding photographers are considered like not actually good photographers. And you're like, listen, in a wedding day, we might use like 25 different lighting techniques, you know, or right. utilize different things and then posing and then posing 10 people or 20 people, you know, for a group photo. And then all th then going back the other way and being like, oh, I photographed one earring on a pillow in a chair by a window, <laughs> you know, um, and then like you and I you'll have like a really cool moment as well that you anticipated or knew was going to happen. Right. So that was like a brain skill that was like, Hey, be ready for this photo skills to like, get it. Um, a once in a lifetime moment, right. They're not going to do it again. They, they're not getting their dress yeah. twice. Um, nope. unless you got a really rough videographer and, uh, you know, <laughs> I've done a few multiple first look weddings before. And I'm like, what is happening here? But it's cool. It's for the gram. Um, and yeah, it's uh, and then, yeah, later that night, you're going to be like a half, hype person half you know that's that's the only time i rock off camera flashes during the reception so you're like oh i have to think about this whole scenario in this room and it's a different room every weekend and uh it's not a studio and you're like people crap on wedding photographers like get out of here so <laughs> like doza and mason will <laughs> beat the crap out of you so <laughs> Oh man, man. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, gosh, we have to do so much, but, but that's, that's what it calls for. And that's, yeah. that's the, that's the challenge. Right. Like, I mean, I love, I love like problem solving. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite things to do in my free time is to go get locked up in a room and try and get out mm. AKA an escape room. Like yeah. I love escape rooms. I love puzzles. Um, I mean, yesterday I was like, doing math for fun <laughs> <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a lot of that like problem solving when you go into a room and you're like okay how do i like the the lighting is shit in here how do i make it cool yeah how do i how do i take something and elevate it because i want to be able to go to a park and it's middle of the day and it's shit and and my camera's half breaking yeah. and i have to shoot with something else and be able to produce that level of work that represents me but also makes my client satisfied yeah ultimately because like, ultimately like your clients are going to remember how they felt like yeah a lot of the times like my favorite photos are not their favorite photos and it's it that 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 disconnect yeah is always really funny um, or they'll like this really obscure photo mm. for whatever reason it resonates with them yeah. and, and in some way. And, and that's, that's always the interesting part because ultimately like, it matters what you're like, if, like, if you want to have a successful business, your clients have to love how they felt. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Through, through the entire process. Yeah. Through the entire process. And that's, that's where, that's where I've fallen short in the past and, and now like have systems in place to make sure that it, mm. it, it happens to exceed their expectations. Yeah. That's a whole other, uh, 
podcast topic with of like having oh my gosh yeah good work but crappy client experience or amazing client experience and your photos are like eh, you know and um it's kind of a funny like dichotomy it's it's hard i was talking to somebody else about this the other day where it's like we're all of us at one level are artists and but it's like then you have to be a good business person marketer all that kind of stuff and uh you know that is you can see what other people excel at and what other people don't or what people put prioritize what their strengths are you know like for me you know i think like one of my strengths is business and getting leads getting clients you booking couples all that kind of stuff um and which is i didn't plan on that being my thing you know uh, but it was one of those things where it like having a really healthy strong you know inquiry to booking to you know conversion rate all that kind of stuff uh like that helps me sleep at night you know (laughs) Uh, yeah and you know some photographers are they suck at that but like i talked to one of my mentees yesterday and her work crushes probably has the best work of any of my mentees i've ever seen uh but she sucks at business you know, so she, you know, that's, sure. you know, sucks the client experience, you know, she's, that's the artist dilemma. Yeah. yeah. She's doing the stuff that her heroes are doing. And I'm like, if you don't know why your heroes are doing this, don't do it. Like you have to, you got to do your own thing. And, uh, it's such a weird, weird thing, but I love what you said about, uh, you know, challenging yourself, you know, like enough photographers don't, uh, shoot for fun or like put yourself in a difficult situation when it's, when the pressure's not on. Right. You know, right, the, right. the park when it's noon, you know, or whatever, or it's dark or your subject is not wearing custom fitting clothes and hair and makeup. And you're like, how do I make them look oh. pretty, you know, or how do I make them look flattering or whatever? And um, Photoshop. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. <laughs> like anybody can take a good photo of a pretty person, right? Like that couple you had at creative. I was like, oh, yeah, like we can crush this, you know. Um, oh, they were so great. She's pregnant. That's amazing. She's, uh, she's having a baby in a like a month. That's amazing. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, I think uh, there's this other photographer who taught me how to be creative mm. and his work is always so inspiring to me. And he's a good friend of mine, Montana Dennis. Yeah. He's been and, on the show. I know Montana. Oh, he has? Yeah, yeah. oh God. He's so great. Yeah. And like, honestly, Montana is one of my friends who I reach out to when like he has the most calm collected kind of like sensei approach to everything Mm -hmm. and and he's always like about like where's your heart at and so if i'm going struggling through something he asked me a question and i like break down and i like start to cry every time just because he's (laughs) he gets to the heart of it he's like yeah well does it bring you joy or does it bring or does it bring you pain you're like oh god (laughs) like yeah great question (laughs) yeah um but he said something a long time ago that has always stuck with me because I was working at a coffee shop and he came in one day and I knew who he was. Mm. And I was like, you're Montana Dennis. You take great <laughs> photos. <laughs> and, and he, he always, he always said like, if you want to, if you want to challenge yourself or if you want to get better, if you want to be creative, create restrictions. Mm, so yeah. whether, whether that is, shooting only on one lens or shooting on a different lens or shooting in like and only this type of environment shoot at night shooting like shoot in at the middle in the middle of the day when the sun yeah. is horrible for most people learn how to learn how to use all those like how to add all of those skills into your tool belt and that way when you're on a paid gig you don't have to learn on that day yeah and you've already like acquired those skills like like right before this podcast, I like dropped off some film just because <laughs> film is part of my like personal life. Yeah. And I love shooting it. I was shoot on like a, a medium Mac camera and trying to figure that out and what works for me. But it's, it's nothing that, that is impressive. It's just more so, Oh, this fic feels really cool. Mm, yeah. Yeah, totally. No, I think I, I'm go- trying to uh, get into the medium format, like Fuji line I want to. Oh, the the digital line? Yeah. But it's, uh, I do, it's like, they're not there yet where I just want crazy depth of field, right? Like, I, I want like 0.4, you know, portraits. Right. But the, the new lens supposedly is pretty close. You know, it's like a 65, 1.3 or something like that, technically. Um, and I, I'm like, okay, that just sounds weird. And that sounds good to me. Like, let's try it. So, like, I, I have that on order. Um, 
But I also think too, I love that. like um, having a camera that would just slow me down and be like, hey, you can't you can't walk into a room and shoot 20 frames. You know, like you got to think about what you're about to do, son. And uh, I think that's my restriction. I have I used to always say I've never shot a frame of film, but a past podcast guest, Joe Tobias, and sent me this uh, this little tiny film camera that was like it felt like a disposable, but it, but it wasn't. OK. And it uh, you could do double exposures in it. It had like two little slider boys in it oh okay cool it, it was so obscure and uh most of it turned out like garbage you know like no, all, right. i'd never and i couldn't adjust exposure like i think it was like you know auto oh, or whatever god and so uh but it was just cool to use and it was like at some level i'm not in control you know or yeah. i'm like it's like the there's a, there's a podcast I listen to and they talk about the ceremony of the record player and they're like yeah people who aren't into ceremony don't have record players because you don't need it you're there you know it's not about yeah. the sound anymore it's not about the warmth anymore it's not about you know anything like that unless the band remasters it for vinyl of course uh but it's like it's about the ceremony and and saying yeah I, it's about ritual yeah i love it yeah ritual coffee right you're a big coffee guy yep so, yep you know uh whereas i'm like mm, i have a ritual but it's like a day before i do cold brew that's like my number one thing so i'm like all right oh i love it i'll have a ritual yeah but i mean i don't have to do it immediately Rituals, ritual. Do you have like a like a wedding day ritual that you have? Oh man, uh, I wish I had. I I want to know more wedding photographers' wedding wedding day rituals. I should like email like fifty photographers and have them send it in because that'd be funny. Um, oh yeah, but I think for me, honestly, it depends on the wedding. Over the years, sure, weddings used to uh, start a little bit later for me. Like I love weddings where I show up at like three p.m. And we're rolling till okay. till one a.m. Um, okay, that's what I like. Party guy, I, yeah, I like yeah. I like the peaceful morning, um, you know, or like the free morning, or like you still kind of get a Saturday, you know, I'll go coffee with the wife or get a chance to work out, you know, whatever. Um, so that's ideal for me on those days. It's usually like you know, shower, get ready, uh, put my dress clothes on, all that stuff, which I, it does always feel awkward for me even now after you know a ton of weddings. It's like I I seldom feel comfortable in my own clothes, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, I usually do that. I'm not a big eater before weddings. Like, I know other guys are like, I have to have a power bar or a big breakfast. And I'm like, I feel like I would feel slow, you know. Or I'm like, if you ate the wrong thing, bro, you're going down for the count. And uh, and I don't have time for that, you know, in D.C. I'm not trying to uh, have to run to the bathroom for, you know, 30 minutes or something like that. Uh, I ate Taco Bell during a wedding once and I learned, I learned the hard way. So <laughs> that is, those are, those are expensive lessons. Yeah. 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 So what about you? What's your pre-wedding, <laughs> uh, pre-wedding r- ritual? Oh man. Pre-wedding, pre wedding pre wedding ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-wedding it's hard to say. Ritual. <laughs> uh, pre-wedding ritual ritual. Um, so for this year, I, I incorporated a little bit last year, but I'm not really having any sort of, um, any sort of catered meals mm. for most of my weddings this year. Yeah. Just because there's a rub that happens between catering and photographers yeah. and photographers will know this where you're, you're ready, like you're ready for your time to eat and catering is busy trying to pull off an entire dinner service of 200 people yeah. in 20 minutes and yeah. their, their job is really, really tough. Um, but then we're hangry because we haven't eaten all day. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so now what I do is I like, I charge my couples a fee, um, for anybody who like usually typically about three people on my team. And so I'm making the meal for all of us the night before. Nice. Pag- packaging it up, making sure that we're all, we're ready and set and fed for, for the day. Mm. Um, so I did that a couple of times last year and it worked out so great. Like it's been, it was, it was awesome. So that's, that's definitely something that, that I do in the morning on a, on a wedding day. I'll typically do my coffee ritual, which is, which is grinding the beans, making sure it it just kind of gets me in a good headspace. Then, and then I will, um, yeah, just put my wedding clothes on. I always suit up, um, typically for 90% of my weddings, I'm suit and tie. Yeah. Um, and 
make sure that like, and I'll recheck my, my, my gear list, like make sure that all that's ready. Text my mom. And then that's about it. Like mom, I'm starting a wedding. I love it. I, uh, part of that, part of that too, is just so that like, there's no like, like calls or anything yeah. just because <laughs> I love it. Um, and my phone's basically on do not disturb all that, like that entire day. Sure. Most days it's on do not disturb, but, but, uh, yeah, that's something that I definitely do. And she always wants to know like what mm. I'm up to. So, so there's that, but as far as like any other rituals, like nothing too crazy. I'm not doing like some sort of like weird shaman dance, yeah. but it's fun. <laughs> it's a, it, just making sure that everything's, everything's set. Yeah. They're totally that coffee, yeah. coffee. Oh, making sure I have, making sure I do have Lara bars. Yeah. I love my Lara bars. Like yeah. I'll, I'll stick them in, in every, uh, in every gear bag that I have. Yeah. That's... And this, this year it's going to be making sure that I have like a mask in every pocket yeah. just because Same. who knows what happens. <laughs> yeah. That was me last year. We, uh, I ended up making custom, uh, masks with my logo on them. There you go. Uh, yeah. Gave them to every couple. And then I had a bunch in my bags and all kinds of stuff and then i'd like give them to vendors or give them to planners and stuff like as just a little like hey oh like, they're so great you know just a uh almost like a hey we'll get through this kind of thing rather than like a gift right. to be like hey here's a reminder we're on the same same page um that's really cool that's awesome what uh what do you have going on the rest of the year you said you got a lot of weddings coming pretty busy um anything else you're excited about and you going anywhere traveling? I know it's, it's tough and you know, for some people frowned upon, but you know, anything you're pumped about this year? Gosh. Yeah. I mean, as far as travel, yeah, I've got, I've got a few things coming up. I've got back to Sedona. Sedona is like one of my favorite places in the world. It's strange because I grew up in the desert and I didn't really love the desert, but the Sedona desert is something that I really fell in love with. Mm. So going back there soon, Headed to Kauai, which will be really fun. That's insane. Um, he, which hopefully by the time that this podcast airs and by the time that like they'll open up travel yeah. to to there. Like my our flights are booked, yeah. but a lot of it is uh, dependent on whether or not we're going to be able to get there sure. and not have to quarantine for ten days. Yeah, because nobody like you can't really photograph somebody and quarantine and make it profitable or less expensive for anybody so yeah. um going to Kauai, then i've got another oahu wedding later this year Sick. going to napa um i think that's all oh i'm going to new york city in a couple weeks nice. so that'll be fun there you go gonna go hopefully hang out with uh paul Wu. So. yeah yeah he's yeah, been on the Paul show too man. <laughs> oh man what a, what a what a gem of a human that guy he's cool he's awesome we've never met in person but we, we've we've chatted a few times so. yeah yeah when he saw us all in in creative at creative uh last uh last year he was like man maybe i should have gone maybe i should have been there <laughs> <laughs> that's great guy though that's great awesome guy. that's cool um uh, but yeah there's a, there's a lot of travel that's coming up which i'm really looking forward to i love it uh uh, and a lot of, I, I get a lot of my inspiration from travel, mm -hmm. um, as cliche as that is. And I know it's super cliche, but, yeah. but putting myself in a new space really inspires me to take just, just, I think there's a, there's, there's not even this whole, like, it's not a, even about like being there. It's about the travel mindset. Right. And, and you're so willing and open to trying new things totally. and, and going to a new place that, that when you're there, it gets, the destination doesn't matter. It's more about, yeah. it's more about your mindset when you're there. And so that's what, that's what I love. And New York feels less like that just because I've been there so many times, Sure, but, but it's still nice to kind of have a little bit different light. It's hard. It's hard to be California light. <laughs> it is hard to be California light, man. That's true. That's true. That's awesome. Well, hey, uh, what about what about you, man? What, what do you got going up? Yeah, man. Uh, all eyes are. I'm launching a course later this year. It's kind of hell yeah. yeah, yeah. Other than I the can't podcast, wait to see it's, that. it's like I'm not talking about it uh, publicly, but we're oh, great. we're launching it, and uh, you know, so I have like the funnel and everything ready to go, and just um, it'll be my biggest thing I've ever done. You know, like a not necessarily sales. You know, like hopefully it sells well, but like it's the, just such a huge project. Um, 
they were putting together. But uh, I'm excited for that. So yeah, that's that's that. And then I think our team has 68 weddings this year <laughs> something stupid but that's absurd yeah and I, it wasn't on purpose but it was you know for us and our strategies for rescheduling and all that kind of stuff it that was the best way it could work out for everybody and so we're like all right let's it's gonna be a hard year but if we can make it we'll we'll be great so um wow yeah man hopefully go back to iceland uh sometime soon uh, you know i love iceland uh, i've been there seven times oh, me too so i'm just like seven times yeah yeah i'm addicted I'll call you Chris Burkhard. Yeah, yeah. I'm the guy that like I like if you and some other friends from California are like, oh, we want to go to Iceland. Uh, you know, it'd be like, Adam, tell me what's up. It'd be like, hey, if if you don't mind, I'll just come with you and I'll just show you all the stuff. You know, I'll just you know or whatever. Or like, uh, my dream is to bring everybody to Iceland. You know, it's I it, I saw um, the the Northern Lights there for the first time. And I, yeah. I cried. Yeah. I, I went so cheesy and put on like explosions in the sky on my, like, on my uh, yeah. iPad and just sat there and cried yeah. and looked up, looked up at the sky. And yeah. it was probably like, a, a, it was a moment I'll never forget. Totally. People don't understand. Like, uh, you know, obviously it's, there's something natural happening, right? Like photons be photon. And, um, but there's something beautiful about like, seeing that and then uh you know it's rare less than one percent of the population in the globe sees the northern lights you know and uh you know and then like in ancient texts back in the day scripture the Quran, everywhere talking about people being like stupefied when they see something you know supernatural right and the northern lights are in yeah. that category baby oh you know? absolutely like i mean i i look back at those old texts it's funny i was a religious studies major in college yeah so i've, I've read a lot of it and it's the closest thing to seeing God that you could like possibly yeah. experience physically. Like, totally. And if you're back in the day, you don't know what photons are. You don't know what yeah. any of that is. Like, of course that's God. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Totally. Like, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. You think, uh, you look at the sky and you're either going to see, you know, darkness day or precipitation. You do not expect to see lights dancing everywhere, different colors, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but most people don't even know that it like dances like that in real time yeah yeah that's like the that was the weirdest thing for us the first time i saw them it was it was only a few minutes and it was just by chance you know and i, I got a right. one cool photo it's not even that cool right because you get home and you kind of lose the like okay you had to be there you know um but then the second time i saw them it was like it was 1 a.m and it was like for an hour and i was like oh this is this is where it's at like just me and my boy there was nobody around us like we're both trying to shoot it but also just experience it at the same time uh and he never shoots like anything slow exposure like my homeboy probably doesn't even shoot anything longer than a second like ever in his life uh, oh my God. so he's like adam i don't even know how to shoot this i'm like bro you're a professional photographer what are you doing uh, so i had to like help him and we're also just we were laughing having a good time it's it's crazy um uh, that's awesome, man. I love it. Well, dude, let's uh, yeah, let, let's get you out of here. Get you uh, right. get your wedding guy designed. This thing up. Yeah, <laughs> get your <laughs> wedding guy designed. Uh, have you finished it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Send me a uh, send me a pic. I want to see. We got to get a little dozer review, man. You know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I will definitely send that over. That'd be sexy, man. Because it's fun to see. Uh, that's the first thing I've ever made, other than photos, where like other people use it. Uh, you know, and just seeing how it's fun seeing it, and then seeing other people like they're having success with it. Like they're like, Oh, my clients really like it. Or, you know, I'm getting good feedback. Oh, it's so useful. I, I like every time I send it off to a client, they're like, wow, there's so much really good stuff in here. Nice. Like, Oh, now I'm really considering a first look. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, like, Oh, the timeline is super helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's yeah, cool. I've, I've got a lot of really good feedback and I provide it as like a gift yeah, for them. Same. Um, I don't really tell them about it beforehand. And I'm, I, I'm just like, Oh, like, like, thank you so much for booking. I'm not sending it physically yet, but yeah, because I don't have them printed, but yeah. I'm sending it digitally. And yeah. they're like, wow, this is so helpful. Thank you. That's cool. Dude, you should you should get one printed and just touch it and you'll be like, oh, OK, it's I know. Well, I have yours printed and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have mine like right behind me and I'm just like, OK, OK. Uh, awesome. Man. Well, hey, where can people go to say hi and uh, and check out your awesome work and, you know, you know, come over and say hi on uh, on Instagram. Just David Mendoza, I I I. That's for David Mendoza the third. 
So hit me up there. If you, if you heard me on the podcast, just shoot me a line, hit me on a DM and just say, I'm here from Adam from the bearded tog. I love it, man. Dude. Thanks so much for being on. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the Bearded Tog. It really means a lot. If you can, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications on when new videos come out immediately. Have a wonderful day, guys, and keep being awesome.